Hello, all my wonderful students. I miss you all so much. All right, I'm back with a movement lesson that involves some improv acting and movement. You may remember doing this lesson in class with me. It is called scene painting. So we get to really use our imaginations with this lesson, which of course I love, and it involves a little bit of acting. This is something that you can do by yourself. You can do it with a group and you could have hours and hours of entertainment with this lesson. Okay, so with the lesson scene painting, we are literally going to be painting a scene with our imaginations. We're going to be doing something called object work, which means we're going to be using our hands and our bodies our arms and our legs and our head and our gestures to be able to describe objects that are in this scene. So one person would go first and they would place an object in the space. Now if you look in the space behind me, you see my cat, Misa. You see a couple of chairs, a big old elliptical which is new um some shelves and all sorts of stuff but we're not going to worry about all of that you want to use your imagination to start with a blank canvas okay so this space can be anywhere we want it to be we're using our imaginations the first person is going to place an object in that space and then the next person is going to go and add an object that relates to that object in the space. Let me give you an example. Okay, so if I was the first person to go, I might say over here is a large, tall, strong cherry tree with blossoms swaying in the wind and flower petals slowly swaying and shifting to the ground. Okay, there's object one. Now the next person might come in and add an object into the space that relates to the first object. If you're doing this by yourself, you can just go next and take the next turn and think, hmm, what might I want to add next to a cherry tree? Aha, here we have a bench with a tall back and it's wooden. The wood is worn and it looks a little old, but if I sit on it, it's still very strong. Hmm. All right. Now again, if you're playing by yourself, you can go again or let someone else take the next turn. If it's just you and one other person, go back and forth. Or if you're doing this with other people in your home and there's more of you, then you can do maybe three people get a turn and keep on going. Okay, so next object. Hmm. Yes. Right here is what's known as a babbling brook. A babbling brook. Water that is rushing down. Rushing down swiftly, rushing, rushing. All right, now we have three objects in this scene. You can keep going or you can stop at three. We're gonna stop at three and I'm gonna tell you what's next. All right. The next part of scene painting is you get to act out a scene dun, 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 using your wonderful creative acting skills in this scene that you just painted with your imagination. So you want to maybe close your eyes and remember all the details of the objects that have been added into this space. And then if you're doing it by yourself, you can act out a scene in that space. Or if you're doing it with a larger group in your household, maybe two people could take a turn to act out a scene in that space. Now, I'm doing this by myself, so I'm gonna act out some sort of a scene in this space. I have a blossoming cherry tree 
with swooping and drooping and flying petals. Uh, there's a wooden bench that's worn but still strong to sit on and a babbling brook of rushing water. So, hmm, that makes me think that maybe I'm sitting in a park doing a little bit of meditating or maybe reading one of my favorite stories. Hmm, so think what kind of ideas you can come up with. If it's you and one other person, then it's really fun to enter into that space and just take turns speaking back and forth and adding on to the scene. One person can start and say whatever they'd like. I love this beautiful park. It's my favorite. The other person might say, oh yes, I used to come here with my grandpa all the time. And the next person could say, we used to play Frisbee right over there. And then the next person again could say back, I love to play Frisbee. Do you want to play right now? And of course, the next person might say, yes. And then you can act out the act of playing Frisbee. You can utilize the objects that you have placed in that space using your imagination. So let me give you an example of that. All right. <clears throat> and start seeing. Ooh, I need to wash my hands. I was just playing in this nice, cool water. Oh, I think I saw a little fish swimming by. I wonder if I can jump over this babbling brook. <gasps> oh, I made it. Yes. Oh. Oh, I've been walking for so long through this trail, this park. I think I ought to take a little seat. Hmm. Now let's see what I have in my backpack. Oh, yes. Yes. I thought I brought my drawing supplies, my sketchbook, and a pencil. Oh, and look at this beautiful cherry tree. Oh, I shall try and draw it. Da, da, da. The petals dropping in a pile on the ground below. I need my pink to show how beautiful those pink petals are. Oh, if only this picture smelled as wonderful as those blossoms. I'm going to take a whiff. Oh, wow. What a magical park. I love it. Now you can keep going on and on for as long as you want, but when you're done, someone can say, whoop, end scene, and you can start all over with a fresh scene. You can use your imagination to erase the space and start from the beginning. Maybe the next person can start with the first object and you can build from there. Remember, you want your objects to somewhat relate to each other, but if you said right here is a snow cone machine and right over there is a T-Rex and right over here is a lava lamp, well, that could still be a very interesting scene. So use your imagination and have fun with it. There are no wrong answers. Have a great time.